It was 1859. A 36-year-old man from Wales with a limited education suddenly became a key figure in biology. He discovered something you cannot see, you cannot hear or even touch. But it's extremely important for studying biology and biodiversity in the world. This is merely an imaginary line passing between two Indonesian islands. If you stand on Bali's coast and look east at Lombok, you'll see a narrow 32-kilometer stretch of water that looks nothing special. But if if you look closely on the western side of the line, the wildlife is typical of Asia, including species like rhinos, elephants, and tigers. The moment you cross the line to the eastern islands, you find a different mix of animals such as marsupials, komodo dragons, and cockatoos. This is known as a biogeographic boundary called the Wallace Line, which marks the meeting point of two regions rich in biodiversity. And this invisible barrier runs through the Malay archipelago, the largest group of islands in the world. How did this invisible line come to be? Why does it affect where species live? How did that man figure out its location? Let's find out the answers to these questions. The man we just talked about was a British naturalist named Alfred Russell Wallace. The Wallace line was named after him. He couldn't complete his studies because of financial difficulties. He left school at six but he cultivated his interest in natural history through his home library. After joining his family's land surveying business, he partnered with entomologist Henry Walter Bates to collect rare specimens. On April 18th, 1854, he set out for an expedition to Indonesia. He first stopped in Singapore, but missed the ship to Sulawesi and ended up in Bali, where he collected specimens and studied local biodiversity. He noticed when he visited a nearby island, it revealed a completely different set of species, including monitor lizards and kangaroos. Next, during his eight years traveling around the Malay archipelago, Wallace kept observing a clear difference in wildlife between these islands. Wallace observed that non-migratory birds could only fly short distances for food, so they couldn't cross the 35-kilometer gap between islands. For underwater creatures, deep sea currents acted also as if there were some barriers. This led him to propose an invisible barrier he called the wall, which runs through Indonesia, such as Makassar Strait between Borneo and Sulawesi, and through the Lombok Strait between Bali and Lombok, where the distance is strikingly small, only about 35 kilometers. This wall or line indeed marks a boundary that separates the animals found on the islands of Bali and Lombok. For example, Birds like the yellow-headed weaver and the Javanese three-toed woodpeckers were common in Java and Bali, but missing on Lombok. This noticeable change included mammals and insects as well. Wallace's line showed more than just how close the islands were. It revealed that some islands on opposite sides of the line are closer to each other than those on the same side. He concluded that geological factors play a role in how animals are distributed. He also believed the way species are spread across the land reflects ancient geological events, making biogeography a way to understand the planet's history. While these ideas seem clear today, they were groundbreaking in Wallace's time. He thought that the Western Islands were once connected to the Asian mainland, but were separated by shallow seas that formed as sea levels rose. This explained how large animals like tigers and rhinos ended up on the islands, even though they couldn't swim across large bodies of water. Wallace also proposed that some islands east of Java and Borneo were leftover pieces of a former Australian continent. According to him, deeper waters with strong currents kept many species from crossing between continents when sea levels were lower. Believe it or not, his barrier still exists today. Many bird and insect species also follow this line and cannot cross the wide ocean gaps. Although Wallace gathered a lot of information, he and his contemporaries did not have the idea of plate tectonics to fully understand the situation. Now, we know that the Earth's surface is always changing, made up of large sections called plates that move and crash into each other over time. However, this was not a clear and widely accepted idea at that time. The concept of plate tectonics became popular in the late 1960s, long after Alfred Russell Wallace's death. The Earth's tectonic plates shape our planet by creating and reshaping continents, forming island chains and building mountains. The Malay Archipelago is a complicated tectonic area where several plates meet, leading to many volcanoes, frequent earthquakes and a variety of animal life. By the 1980s, scientists confirmed that the Wallace Line was caused by plate tectonics. 
Wallace correctly pointed out that two large land masses once existed on either side of this line, the Paleo continent of Sunda in the west and Sahul in the east. These continents were around during the ice ages when sea levels were lower. Although they are close now, the two partly sunken continents were once much farther apart. The Sahul continent on the eastern side of the line included Australia, Tasmania, New Guinea and the Aru Islands. It only got closer to the Asian Sunda continental shelf in the west about 20 to 25 million years ago during the late Oligocene or early Miocene epoch. This shift happened as the Australian plate slowly moved north over millions of years after separating from Antarctica in the south. As it drifted, it carried its unique species of birds, reptiles and marsupials. So, even though the species on each side of the line are neighbours now, they have been evolving separately for a long time, only coming together recently in terms of evolution. Between them, just east of the line, plate tectonics formed a new chain of islands known as Wallacea. These islands are different from the continental islands nearby because they were never connected to the larger land masses. They were like empty canvases waiting for creatures to arrive and most of the species that made it there came from the Australian side since the Wallace line acted as a barrier to Asian species moving east. For example, let's consider the Komodo dragon, a large lizard that lives on a few islands in eastern Indonesia. Their fossils show they first appeared in mainland Australia over three million years ago during the Pliocene epoch. They only reached their current homes in Indonesia about one million years ago. Today, deep waters and strong currents between these regions, like the strait between Lombok and Bali, still limits how many species can move across the area. Although Wallace's invisible line isn't a real physical barrier, it highlights how ancient geological events can influence the diversity and distribution of life in impressive ways. But to your surprise, the then scientific community rejected Wallace's theory at the first glance because it lacked scientific evidence. And what happened next is not easy to digest. In a letter from 1866, Charles Darwin also praised Wallace's work after he sent his findings from Indonesia in 1858. However, later it was found that Wallace wasn't mentioned in Darwin's legendary book, The Origin of Species. Wallace even introduced the idea of survival of the fittest, suggesting that all species evolve from earlier ones. He hoped Darwin would appreciate his ideas, but Darwin only used them to develop his own theory of evolution, becoming known as the father of evolutionary biology. Sadly, Wallace's ideas were confirmed 50 years after his death with the theory of plate tectonics, which explains how the Earth's layers have moved since the planet formed. His theory that Bali was connected to Asia and Lombok to Australia was proven correct. Scientists showed that low-lying areas between Bali and Lombok were separated by water, affecting deep sea currents and lava flow. The cooled lava created temperature barriers that made it difficult for aquatic animals to swim in sudden temperature changes, creating an unfavorable environment for many species. If plate tectonics had been discovered sooner, Wallace, who significantly contributed to biodiversity with 125,000 plant species and 1,500 insect species, might not have gone completely unrecognized. What's your take on this? Did you know about this side of Darwin? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this content, hit that subscribe button for more fascinating updates and don't forget to give this video a like. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.